What's going on, guys? Welcome to a weird episode of Fantasy in Progress. It's not a regular podcast because everybody's busy right now, so I thought I'd put out a video on the new Pandemonium raids. I've been doing these raids on Savage for the last little while, for the last about three weeks or so, but I wanted to talk about the normal modes and just talk about the story that Square Enix is telling with this raid and also... The fights. The fights have been an interesting debate right now, especially on the Savage side of it. But I'm just going to talk about the normal today. Maybe I'll touch a little bit on the, on the Savage side. But I am going to be talking uh, full spoilers when it comes to the story. So if you haven't played Pandemonium yet, I recommend stop the video, go play it, come back. The story is wild. It's wild. So this next tier that we have is Abyssos. It is more story... That we're that we're getting that the continuation from Asphodolus. But now we get the La Brea end of it. We actually see La Brea. We don't know if this is the actual La Brea that is with us, or this is a whole different La Brea. We I wanna say it's a different La Brea that we know, but we kind of get a interesting story between him and his son. And we figure out that they, they have a really bad relationship. This kind of is hinted at in Asphodolus. But seeing it now in uh, Abyssos, it is tumultuous to say the least. But when we start progressing through the story, when we start progressing through all the floors, we start seeing the picture a little bit more clear of like the major problems that were happening were with him and his mother and his mother kind of this figure that we don't know too much about, Athena, but we figure out who she is by the end of this raid tier and it is something something special something special for the first uh for the first fight we see proto carbuncle which is the very first fight of the tier it is a it's a pretty rudimentary fight it is a fun fight though it is it's very difficult sometimes gauging these fights especially the first and the second one because usually they're like drop dead easy honestly the first fight is drop dead easy it's not that difficult but it is really, really fun. It's engaging. It keeps you on on your toes. It keeps you moving. What else could you really ask for in a normal fight, honestly? Uh, like I said, I'm not going to talk too much about Savage. I think the first fight for Savage is one of the best that Square Enix has done. And it's so fun to, to play. It is so fun to experience. The, the mechanics are just like kind of normal mode, but just kind of anteed up a little bit. And I think they, so they struck a great balance for a first fight. But we... Jail, Proto Carbuncle, and this girl, Proto Carbuncle, there is something happened. They did so many experiments on this thing. I feel bad for it. <laughs> After the Proto Carbuncle fight, we figure out that the person behind all of this is just La Habrea, but it feels it is the younger version of La Habrea. So we don't know if this is the actual real one or if this is the fake one, but he, re he reveals himself to be La Habrea. We also figure out that there are kind of these people that are officers that are in Pandemonium and they've kind of been taken over by the monsters that are inside this facility. The next fight is against Hegemony, which is a keyword that's in Abyssos. This fight was kind of not great. I did not, it wasn't as engaging as Proto Carbuncle. It's very telegraphed. It is very by paint by the numbers kind of type thing. In Savage Mode, it is a little bit more complicated, but like it doesn't get too complicated, especially the like the tethers with the different places where it's going to be safe or not. Um, Kachekskia 1, Kachekskia 2, those can be a little bit more difficult, but honestly, people just LB3 through Kachekskia 2, so it's not that big of a deal. Getting through this fight, we finally see the dialogue between Eric Thonios and La Brea. We, we see why they're having this strife and what the main cause of this strife is. And seeing La Brea so cold, seeing him so calculated here, it really kind of tells you what kind of person he was and how dedicated he was to his craft. And Eric Thonios really blaming La Brea about his mother's death. As we delve deeper into Pandemonium, we figure out that the next person in our way is Agdistus. She's been serving Pandemonium since its inception, and her magics are very, very powerful. It's something that Hephaestus, now that we know his name is Hephaestus, has kind of taken under his wing. He knows if something happens to her that his experiment could fail. 
So we go deeper into it, and we have this fight that is, it's one of those big boss fights, no hip, like the hitbox is really big, no positionals, the arena changes the way that it looks, it's kind of like a triangle shape, it's really cool, it's a cool fight, I haven't got to the savage fight yet for this yet, so I don't know what it kind of is, what it entails, and stuff like that, but I am very, very excited to see what this is. Great fight, I think they kind of nailed the three platform kind of style here it's something different because we always see a circle or a square seeing three platforms in a triangle it's really really cool i know in savage it's got a different uh formation which is honestly even cooler it's even cooler great mechanics good way to like get the party to move around depending on if it's you're gonna see uh behemoths if you're gonna see birds i know they probably i think they add um other stuff into savage so that's really, really cool as well all in all it's a really really fun fight i think they they kind of nailed this one uh but i i've heard mixed things about the savage fight so i'm kind of excited to see what what what's in store then we get to the last fight the eighth circle before we get there we have this back and forth with la brea and Elidibus. We don't know it's a little bit, so nobody really flat out tells it's a, everybody that's a little bit, but we already know. We know that from the voiceover from the very beginning of Pandemonium that it is a little bit. It's the same voice actor. But we get confirmation now, which honestly, great confirmation, great kind of reveal, but we already knew. But we get this back and forth saying, should we go deeper into Pandemonium? What is going to happen when we go deeper? What kind of secrets are we going to uncover? And as the main overseer, Elidibus says, yes, we're going to keep going. We've got, we've got to see what is at the end of this road that we're on right now. So we get there, and we finally find Hephaestus. But in the room with Hephaestus, we find a bunch of bodies. We find Eric Thonios hung up as well, but a lot of DNA strands. So we kind of figure out what is happening here when we fight Hephaestus, when we get there. It's a science experiment. They're trying to get godhood. They want to try to create life. They want to try to create life that can bear a soul. After we defeat Hephaestus, we figure out that this is a younger version of La Habrea. A version of La Habrea that was split into two that merged into Athena. So this is where it all kind of comes together. This is where the Athena plays her part. She is on this mad experiment, this mad journey to create life she wants to create life and she is consumed by this and la habrea loves her and he is this person that wants to do anything he can to be with her then he splits his self into two one part being the very cold calculated one person that really wants to make a difference and create something to the other which is the emotional the one that is yearning for that love and that is what the young La Habra is. It is the version of him that is emotional, that is irrational, that wants wants Athena back as much as he can. The La Habra that we meet, that is the older one, is the cold and calculated one. Things are getting crazy. And then the final cutscene is we see Pandemonium in the Ethereal Sea. So we're... At a crossroad here. The last tier is going to be us delving deeper into Pandemonium at the Ethereal Sea level. And I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I don't have, like, major speculations. As you guys can tell, I'm, like, top-level story right now. Like, I am not, like, uh, I'm not a Mr. Happy. I'm not a lore person. Like, I am a lore person, but I just don't have the lore fully grasped yet. But I'm trying my hardest. This is what this video kind of is and trying to be a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so that's Pandemonium so far. What I would rate the last fight, I think the last fight is good. I think they, they nailed the mechanics. A lot of the mechanics are kind of boring from previous fights, which is which is honestly fine as long as they put a new twist to it, which they do. They got the, the different plumes you have to go to, and then they keep jumping. The dragons keep jumping. You got the snakes or the uh, phoenix, depending if you have to be in or out. They got snakes that you have to turn away from, that you have to kill and stuff like that. I, like again, like I said, I've never been in savage mode yet, so I'm excited. 
and I know it's a door boss. That I know for that for sure, but I haven't been into those yet. Maybe I'll make a different video for the savage fights and just talk about the savage fights themselves. Is that of the lore stuff? But I just wanted to make this video quickly and just talk about Pandemonium because I am so excited where this story is going. I was so excited about the music. The music is to die for in this. Having Scream with no lyrics when we had Proto Carbuncle was awesome. And then going into P6 and getting the lyrics through P6 and P7, genius idea, genius idea. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you guys like the stuff on the channel, hit that sub button. We really appreciate it. Again, this is Fantasy in Progress. We're taking the week off for a regular podcast, but I just wanted to put this video out and just talk about the, the rain, what I thought about it and stuff like that. We're back again with a regular podcast next week. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.